We've reviewed lots of books here on the channel under the topic of prayer, such as uh, The Valley of Vision, Thoughts on Public Prayer by Samuel Miller, A Guide to Prayer by Isaac Watts, A Way to Pray by uh, Matthew Henry, uh, edited and revised by O. Palmer Robertson, uh, and more recently but we've been going through um, the works of William J. And so now we come to another book under the category of both of those different things, uh, and uh, Prayers for the Use of Families by the Reverend William J. This is technically two books in one, so the actual prayers are 235 pages, uh, and there's a Jubilee Memorial after 50 years of William J.'s ministry at Argyle Chapel, which comes out to be 179 pages, making the total 414 pages. This is a beautiful cloth-bound uh, binding, or at least um, it is the same as the other Sprinkle Publications William J. Uh, volumes. I'm not sure if this is uh, if this is cloth-bound, but it's it's a nice uh, nice bound book, and it's also Smith's own. Um, if you're new, let me welcome you to Petra Publications. My name is Davis, and here on this channel, I basically just review reformed Christian books. If that sounds like something you're interested in, I welcome you to subscribe. I'd love to have you join us. And if you've been watching for quite some time now, uh, links to my Patreon and PayPal are in the description down below. If you want to be more involved in the community here at Petra Publications, I did just release recently a Discord server, uh, and uh, links to all of those things are down below in the description, and I'd uh, love to see you there. Um, <clears throat> okay, so because we've already looked at three volumes of William J., uh, I'm not going to give much information about him. Usually at this point in the review, I give lots of information about the author. Uh, but one of the books that I reviewed also was his autobiography. So if you want to know more about him, you can learn a lot about him in that book, of course. Uh, but I will go ahead and say that he was born on May 6th of 1769, and he died on December 27th of 1853. Um, Jay married his wife, Annie, in 19... Or, sorry, excuse me, 1791, with whom he had six children after leaving work with his father, who was a stonemason, in 1785 to pursue education and the ministry. All right, well, now let's go ahead and dive into the book review proper. What was it about this book that stood out to me? And I've divided this particular review into two sections, things that I liked and things that I didn't like. So first, we'll dive into the things that I did like. Um, <clears throat> first of all, the prayers were extremely biblical and included a ton of scripture references and quotations. It was very much along the same lines as Matthew Henry's book, uh, A Way to Pray, in that many of the, the words and the phrases of Jay's book were just straight scripture, which I'll read some of uh, some passages from this book in just a moment. You'll get a feel for that. Uh, the only real difference was that Jay did not um, give the, uh, the citation to the, the quote. He only uh, just kind of referenced it, and you just kind of had to know where, where it was coming from. Um, but that was one thing that really stood out, and I, I, I enjoyed that. Um, just as Henry would point out, we need to be praying the scriptures. So Jay incorporates a lot of scripture, and so I, that's, that's the first thing that I really liked. Secondly, um, there are six weeks of twice daily prayers, given, uh, giving 84 individual prayers for daily usage, or 42 days of twice daily. And so <clears throat> there are a lot of prayers in this book, 84 of them. Uh, and I have I have something else to say, but that'll fall under my uh, things I didn't like section. Um, but definitely the number of prayers that are here, it's a lot of content. Each one of these prayers is about a page and a half, sometimes two pages long. Um, and the text is about this large, so it's, it's fairly small. And uh, so you're getting a lot of content in those 84 prayers. Uh, third, addition, uh, there are additional 52 topical prayers for particular occasions, and I'll read from the, um, the table of contents in just a moment, and you'll see just what those are. But those are 52 additional prayers on top of the 84 already given uh, for the six-week period. And so this is a lot of prayers, uh, a lot of content. They're all, as I've already said, very biblical and include a lot of quotations and references to scripture. And so <clears throat> there's a lot of biblical content 
that can be drawn from here and used in family devotion. Uh, finally, I liked the inclusion of the Jubilee. Uh, the reason that I mainly appreciated that being included was I don't think it otherwise would be printed uh, because it doesn't really fit anywhere else. It didn't entirely fit in the back of this book either, but uh, it definitely wouldn't have fit in any of the other books published by Sprinkle Publications. And so in the back, printed as an entirely separate volume, um, the pages, page numbers start over and everything like that, is this right here, uh, if I can get to it, the Jubilee Memorial being the sermons, meetings, presentations, and full account of the Jubilee commemorating the Reverend William J's 50 years ministry at Argyle Chapel at Bath. And, um, and so all of this is from that. Now, of course, this has a much larger font, uh, which is strange, <laughs> but also kind of nice. And I really like the inclusion of this. It has, as I just read from the uh, title page there, sermons. It has presentations. It has everything. It in even includes the hymns that were sung that evening in the very back. So lots of helpful and interesting information there. Okay, things I didn't like. Point two, things I didn't like about the book. Um, as Samuel Miller says, I, I'm pretty sure it was Samuel Miller in his book, Thoughts for Public Prayer. I went back to try to find the quotation and I couldn't, so I can't prove that it was Miller, but I'm fairly positive. Uh, but he says in his book that the prayers in Jay's book are too long and it may be difficult for children to pay attention throughout the whole thing. And I can definitely agree with uh, with Miller here because I myself had trouble paying attention through the whole sermons, or excuse me, prayers. And um, I used this book for uh, maybe eight weeks, using it as a personal devotion uh, to read through all, all of the prayers. <clears throat> I would read one uh, during my prayer time. And um, I found it rather difficult to pay attention the whole time. So I can only imagine if, uh, if a child who has a shorter attention span than I do tried to uh, listen to the whole uh, prayer, they definitely would have some trouble uh, paying attention through the whole thing and actually gleaning something from it. Um, so definitely they were, a little, they were a little long. Secondly, the idea of uh, morning and evening prayers can be extremely discouraging, and I discovered this as I was reading through it, uh, because, uh, and this is the same thing, same thing about uh, Bible reading plans. I don't like daily settings. Um, I use Matthew Everhard's Bible reading plan, which is just a piece. Actually, I have it sitting right here. A piece of paper with all of the uh, books of the Bible in a box for every single chapter. And you just mark it off as you go. And that is so much healthier for me than a daily plan. You get behind, you get bogged down, and then you feel like you have to catch up and it's just a big mess. And the same thing happened with these prayers. And I'll be frankly honest with you, uh, I, uh, I, my evening devotions are basically non-existent. And this has morning and evening prayers, which is fantastic. I, I wish I had an evening devotion. But I would wake up in the morning to do my devotions in the morning, and I would find out that I had not read my evening prayer. And so I would get days behind in the evening prayer and then have to try to try to catch it up and it just it was extremely discouraging and so I think it would be better to read them as 84 individual prayers um, instead of actually trying to keep 42 days worth of twice a day um, especially in the busyness of the family someone's sick someone is gone some you know things happen and I think it's kind of uh, it'd be great if you could consistently have twice a day devotions every single day but I don't think that's uh, exactly realistic. Um, and then finally, the text is a little bit small for family devotions. I, I've shown this already in this review, uh, but it's just, it was fine in reading it as a personal private devotion. I didn't have any problems with that, but I think if I were to read it aloud to other people, it should be slightly larger. I, again, I think of, um, oh, I, I skipped something I was trying to say. Uh, in terms of the length of the prayer, I think of the Valley of Vision, which has very short prayers, but they're so beautiful. And I think a child definitely could pay attention through the Valley of Vision. I forgot to mention that. But now I come to this other point where the text size, I think of the Valley of Vision, which has this brilliant, large font, uh, very easy to read, um, 
and it would be great for family reading um, or public reading. And so just in comparison to those things, this book is extremely difficult to read out loud to a bunch of people. The text is just too small. Um, that's a very nitty gritty kind of thing, but I think it matters in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and also it would make the book a lot larger and it's already, you know, not a small book. So I think there are reasons for both ways of doing things, but uh, I definitely wish the text was slightly larger. Okay, so that was the final thing that I didn't like. Uh, so taking into consideration the positives and the negatives, which I've just mentioned, uh, I think this is a perfect book either for personal devotion and or inspiration for family prayer. You can take the content, and I, I found myself even doing this as I was reading it. When I went to read uh, without a text, just off of my own head, um, I began to quote Jay. I was gleaning the information and reciting it in my own prayer, and I found that extremely helpful. I did the same thing as I was praying through, or uh, yeah, praying and reading through Henry and Watts. Uh, they offer many prayers that you can pray uh, to God yourself. And so I began to take those and pray them myself without reading them. And so I think you could do the same thing. Read Jay as an inspiration and present it to your family as, <clears throat> as your own prayer without reading it. And it would be a lot shorter. Uh, it'd be a lot more concise and it'd be more personal in terms of, uh, you know, actual relations to your family. Um, <clears throat> But I think, yeah, definitely, definitely uh, a great book. It does have its faults, however. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and read the uh, table of contents to give you an idea of what this book includes. So this is split into uh, three parts. The first part is prayers for morning and evening for six weeks, as I've already mentioned. Part two is prayers for select occasions. Uh, there are too many of those to, to read individually. Uh, and then part three short devotions to be used occasionally. Um, and then first, petitions for uh, particular occasions. Secondly, pious addresses for particular seasons. Thirdly, thanksgiving for particular events. And then an appendix, which includes um, even more prayers for particular occasions. And then prayers at the table, and it says uh, before meat and after meat. Uh, and then finally, Skipping back here to the end of the book, where this new book begins, uh, you have the introduction, religious commemoration of the Reverend William J.'s Jubilee, a sermon by the Reverend William J., a sermon by the Reverend Timothy East of Bir Birmingham, a social celebration of the Reverend William J.'s Jubilee, morning meeting at the assembly rooms, presentation and speeches, um, Evening meeting at Argyle Chapel, erection of pillars, juvenile presentation and speeches. Um, and then finally, uh, anthems sung at the evening meeting, Jubilee Hymns, composed by J. Montgomery Esquire. So there's a lot of content just in this back portion of the book, as I've already mentioned. But now I'm going to, uh, let's see here, what do I have on my backside? I meant to print this on two sheets and it printed... Uh, <laughs> Both sided. Um, okay, so would I buy this book? I've mentioned a few faults. I've mentioned a few positives. Yes, I would buy the book, especially given that this is put out by Sprinkle Publications, which is out of business. They are extremely difficult to get your hands on. And uh, if you find it anywhere, and I'll try to link to somewhere in the description down below, if there's somewhere I can find, I highly recommend that you buy any William J. that you can find. Um, okay, so now let me uh, read some quotes from this book to give you an idea of uh, just what he's writing like and how uh, what I have said applies to this book and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Excuse me. Um, but uh, yeah, let me go ahead and start that. And uh, the first quote I pulled out is on page 25. <clears throat> this is from uh, the first week uh, for Saturday morning. He says, fit us for every changing scene and in all the events that God would alarm or perplex us, or I'm excuse, excuse me, that would alarm or perplex us, may our minds be stayed up upon God and our thoughts be established. May we remember that, that trials from thy hand are blessings in disguise and that when they come to be unveiled and we can view them in their designs and effects, they will draw forth our gratitude and praise. Till we can walk by sight, enable us to walk by faith. 
and may nothing weaken our persuasion that all thy ways are mercy and truth to thy people, and that all the things work together for the good to them that love thee. That is a very good quote, and that was exactly what I needed to hear that day. I I remember reading that and, and just thinking, wow, that was precisely what I needed to hear. Uh, and it was strange how that happened multiple times. You would be reading through uh, and something in the prayer directly and specifically addressed something you were dealing with. And so that was very cool. Um, the next quote I have is from Tuesday evening of the second week. This is found on page 39. He says, For blessed be thy name, we live not in a fatherless world, nor are our uh, minutest affairs forgotten before God. The hairs of our head are numbered. Our losses and trials are not the effects of chance, but events in which thy wisdom and mercy are now concerned and will be hereafter displayed. We know that all things work together for good to them that love thee. May our character, therefore, and not our condition, be the object of our anxiety. That's important. Uh, May we ascertain that our heart is right with thee and be careful for nothing. Having given ourselves unto the Lord, may we remember that we have a right from thy holy word to depend upon thee to provide for us and to manage all our concerns even to the end. Amen to that. Here's a much shorter quote coming from uh, Wednesday morning of the second week on page 41. He says, And whatever we uh, may be the opinion of our fellow creatures concerning us, may we be satisfied and happy in having the testimony that we please God. Again, I say amen to that. Page um, 70. I'm sorry. No, no, that's right. 70. Sorry, I'm a little scattered this this afternoon. Uh Okay, page 70, this comes from the third week, uh, Thursday morning. He says, this is the very beginning of the prayer, O God, help us to approach thee under a very lively conviction of thy abundant mercy and the exceeding riches of thy grace. We ought to admire thy wisdom, to stand stand in awe of thy power, and to abase ourselves before thy spotless purity. But it is the discovery of thy goodness alone that can banish our fear and allure us with humble confidence into thy presence, there to divulge our sorrows and confess our sins. And you can see how he's pulling in these scriptural ideas and even scriptural quotations uh, without actually citing them. It's, it's It's very neat. Page 120. Uh, this is the fifth week, Monday. Or, t- excuse me, Tuesday morning. He says, "And may we be concerned that the blessings we ask for ourselves may be imparted to others. Teach us to love our neighbor as ourselves, and may we often examine our conditions in life, our offenses, our offices, sorry, our talents and our opportunities, to see how we may be serviceable in our day and generation." And again, these things, even though they were written so long ago, they are so applicable to today. They're just so practical. Like that quotation I just read. There's nothing about that that is uh, old or, uh, you know, irrelevant now. It's it's very true to today, and and that's just fantastic. Uh, Page 146, this is the final week, week six, uh, the Monday morning. He says... Be the friend of our friends, the father of our children, the master of our servants. Bless this family. May thine eye and thy heart be here continually. May all the members of this household make thy word the rule of their conduct, submitting themselves one to another in the fear of God, and by love serving one another. Some of our conditions are far from us, far off from us, but we are we rejoice to think. Some of our connections, I don't know if that's what I said, but some of our connections are far off from us, but we rejoice to think that they are near thee and that thou art a very present help in trouble. Keep them as the apple of of thy eye, hide them under the shadow of thy wing, and may all grace about, about them, about towards them, sorry, 
Let the young be sober-minded and flee youthful lusts. Let the hoary head be a crown of glory, being found in the way of righteousness. We pray for the afflicted and we pray still more for the prosperous and indulged. Again, what a fantastic prayer. Okay, skipping over to uh, the second portion, the Jubilee, I have just a couple quotations here um, to give you an idea of what the Jubilee is like. And this is these are both from his from Jay's sermon. Um, so I don't have anything from the rest of the content there, but this is from his sermon, and the sermon was quite quite good. And uh, this is found on page twenty five of the Jubilee. It says, popularity is always dangerous and frequently injurious. And perhaps no kind of popularity is so exciting as that which arises from imminent and distinguished usefulness. If Luther or Whitfield or Wesley could have seen in a vision what they did while living and what they are doing now, they are dead, uh, they might have been exalted above measure. But no, doubt, uh, but no danger will attend any discoveries of this kind hereafter. There will be no subtle vanity in us to work upon. We shall not sacrifice our own net or burn incense to our own drag. We shall see and acknowledge that we are only instruments, nor shall we feel as some sometimes now do, as we sometimes now do, that we were the instruments and employed rather than others. Uh that speaks for itself. I, yeah, I think an understanding of uh, of being the instrument, not the cause um, of popularity. You're you're an instrument of God, and God has given you. He's using you as this instrument of popularity, but it is not of your own doing. I think that's so so important. And finally, I'll end this review uh, as William J. quotes Mr. Hervey. Um, Presenting the gospel in three words. He calls it the three R's. He says, Ruin, redemption, and regeneration. Ruin by Adam, redemption by Christ, and regeneration by the Spirit. He goes on to say, From these principles, and these are principles, I have never seen yet, uh, seen cause yet to swerve. And that is the gospel of and principles, which William J. preached all throughout his life in his 60 years as a minister at Argyle Chapel. Well, that is all I have for this particular review. Hopefully that was helpful to you in some shape, way, or form. And if it was, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. Uh, hopefully, Lord willing, I will see you again very soon. God bless.